Hi, I'm Beth Dean, CEO of Cure Epilepsy. Thank you for joining us as we share SUDEP, A Family's Pain Drives the Inspiration for Research, as part of the Purple Day Around the World 2022 conference. Cure Epilepsy's mission is to promote and fund patient-focused research to find a cure for epilepsy. Since our founding over 20 years ago, we've raised over $85 million and funded over 270 grants supporting novel research projects to accelerate the search for cures and more effective treatments. SUDEP, or Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy, is a cure epilepsy priority research area and an area we pioneered. In the past 20 years, we have funded 38 grants to find a cure to stop SUDEP, one of the most devastating consequences of epilepsy. Today, you'll hear from Lauren Donnelty, who lost her brother, Chris Donnelty, to suit up 20 years ago. It's rare that we have the opportunity to hear from a sibling, and this is one discussion that you won't want to miss. Along with Lauren, we'll hear from Dr. Kevin Staley, a child neurologist at Massachusetts General Hospital, who will share more information about what SUDEP is, what we know about SUDEP and our ability to mitigate risks, and the progress that we are making in research to better understand SUDEP and be able to stop it. Christopher is the youngest in our family. When he was born, I was five and my sister Allison was eight. So he was very much our younger brother. So a lot of my memories of Christopher are really when he was a child and sort of those everyday moments. He had a love for matchbox cars. He was always playing with his matchbox cars. He had an imaginary friend named Charlie who fixed the cars for him. He knew the model and make of every single car that passed on the street. He was known as the king of the sandbox. He was always creating elaborate sand castles in the sandbox during the summers. We have a little park across the street from our house that has since been named after Christopher, where he would play baseball with his friends. And as we got older, um, what I remember most about Christopher is his fierce loyalty to the people that he loved and cared for. So even when he was in Florida in college, he called frequently, he reached out frequently to the people that he loved to always just sort of let them know that he was thinking of them and caring for them from afar. Chris had his first seizure when he was in fourth grade. And at that time, he was not diagnosed with epilepsy. He had another seizure in eighth grade and again was not diagnosed at that time. It wasn't until he was a senior in high school that he received uh, the epilepsy diagnosis. Christopher's seizures were really few and far between. I never witnessed him having a seizure. Um, in fact, the only person in my family that witnessed it was my dad. And so when he was diagnosed, well, you know, it's never something that you want to hear that somebody has epilepsy. Certainly, we all believed that he was going to be fine. He would take his medicine, it would be managed through medication, and he was just going to be fine and he was going to be able to live his life. And there really wasn't going to be any change to the trajectory of his life. And certainly, as his sister, you know, there's a protectiveness there. I wanted to make sure he was safe. Um, when he went to college, I wanted to make sure he was getting enough sleep, that he was taking care of himself, that he wasn't sort of doing things that some college kids might do um, that would sort of increase his seizure activity or make him more at risk for having more frequent seizures than he was having. And by all accounts, he was doing great. I do think looking back, the medication certainly affected him physically and mentally. And one of my biggest regrets as his sister is I really didn't educate myself enough on the impact that epilepsy medication had on him. It, you know, it, he had physical side effects. He often complained about memory loss. Um, and I think he really struggled more than he let on to those closest to him. So it did affect his relationships on some level because, you know, he didn't feel good a lot. You know, I particularly remember at my wedding, he came to the wedding and really didn't feel well that weekend. And I remember it being pretty sad because he was not feeling well during, you know, a pretty big milestone in our family. I was married in July and Christopher died in February. When a child dies, the focus 
understandably is often on pa- on the parents. So <sighs> the siblings, I definitely think get overlooked. I think their grief is, it's a different type of grief. And when people want to check in with you as a family, they often would say to Allison and I, how are your mom and dad? And not many people sort of asked how we were doing. Theoretically, the relationship with your siblings should be really the longest relationship in your life. You know them from beginning to end in many cases. And we lost that with Christopher. We, that shared history that you have as siblings, those inside jokes as families, the way you think about your parents and that you joke about your parents or roll your eyes at your parents, you know, only your siblings can really understand that. And so we, you know, when we don't have that anymore with Christopher, we don't have that, that shared history really ended 20 years ago. The grief is deep and it's just to me, just as real as it was 20 years ago. You obviously learn to live with the grief, but you're forever changed. You're forever changed as a person and you're forever changed as a sibling. You know, Allison and I are raising children that will never know their uncle. Um, So he lives on just through the stories that we tell his two nieces and his two nephews. There's something in each of our children that remind us a lot of Christopher, which is very comforting. But the reality is um, that he's not here. He's not here for the milestones. He's not here for the happy moments that really just are not as happy because he's not here and we're missing him so much. So there's always a sadness. And it's a it's a a different sadness when you go through your life without your sibling, without your brother. I can tell you very confidently that we knew nothing about Sudap before Christopher died. We never knew that he could die from this. I mean, certainly you hear about people who have seizures who there's some secondary accident that happens. They hit their head or they drown or but we never ever heard the term SUDAP and we never knew that just having a seizure could end his life so unexpectedly. Um, To my knowledge, no doctor ever spoke to him about SUDAP. And I certainly know that no doctor ever spoke to my family about the risk factors or that the possibility was even there that this could happen to an otherwise healthy 21 year old kid. We are a family that believes in science, and we are a family that believes that research is the answer to finding the cure for this disease. So since Christopher's death, my family, particularly my parents, have been relentless in trying to find a cure for epilepsy. I am so proud of my parents and my community, my upstate New York community, that have rallied around my family to raise money to fund research grants. There are brilliant minds that are working every day all over the country and all over the world to find a cure for epilepsy. And I know that I I have to get up every day with the hope that someday there will be an answer and someday there will be a cure for this disease so that no other sister loses her brother to epilepsy. I'm Kevin Staley, a child neurologist at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. It's great to hear Lauren talk about Chris. I never had the opportunity to meet Chris, but I know his and Lauren's mom, Jean. Jean shared his story in a photo, which I keep on the wall of my lab, to serve as an inspiration and motivation to our researchers. It's a reminder as to why this research is so important to the 65 million people worldwide with epilepsy and their friends, families, and loved ones. SUDEP stands for Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy. One of the critical accomplishments of CURE has been the increased awareness of SUDEP. It may seem strange now, but 30 years ago, SUDEP wasn't even named, and there wasn't as much as one study a year describing unexpected death in people with epilepsy. Whereas in the first two months of 2022, there are already 40 studies of SUDEP published. So you can see that awareness and research regarding SUDEP have really been tremendously boosted by CURE. The awareness of SUDEP is important because it impacts how epilepsy is managed. 
We now know that the overall risk of SUDEP is one per thousand patients per year, so over 3,000 people a year in the U.S. die of SUDEP. We know the risk factors, uncontrolled epilepsy with generalized tonic-clonic seizures being the primary risk. And we know the highest risk period is at night during sleep. So now we work harder to completely control epilepsy and prevent those generalized tonic-clonic seizures. 20 years ago, SUDEP was just beginning to be talked about. And it's critical for doctors uh, who manage epilepsy to be very aware of SUDEP. And I think, unfortunately, in Chris's era, uh, that was uh, not the case. It's important to discuss with patients because occasional nocturnal seizures don't sound like a big problem. And so there have been uh, surveys of doctors, you know, child neurologists in particular, where uh, SUDEP may not be uh, discussed uh, because of the worry that, that it will increase the anxiety of the parents. I think in cases where generalized tonic-clonic seizures, the primary risk factor are involved, then it's important to talk to parents. I can give you a personal example. In the early 90s, I cared for an adolescent patient with lennox gastaut syndrome with intractable generalized tonic-clonic seizures. We finally controlled his daytime seizures on three medications. However, we continued to experience occasional nighttime seizures. My last note in this chart indicates that it wasn't worth adding a fourth anticonvulsant because the seizures in bed wouldn't be harmful. Of course, I was thinking about falls and not SUDEP, and unfortunately, the patient died of SUDEP a few weeks later. At the time, I didn't know what SUDEP was, and I had never discussed the possibility of sudden death with the family. So I can say from experience that physicians don't want to have a patient die without warning, and of course, neither do parents, patients or their families. So from my perspective, the best way to get the conversation started is to raise awareness of SUDEP among physicians, as Cura has done so effectively, and the physicians will discuss SUDEP with the families. Physicians normally discuss risks and benefits of anticonvulsant therapies. So introducing SUDEP makes it possible to discuss the prevention of SUDEP as a benefit of successful anticonvulsant therapy. Cura has really been instrumental in raising awareness of SUDEP and making SUDEP a focus of research. Cura launched the first of its kind research program dedicated to SUDEP and partnered with NIH to host the first ever scientific SUDEP meeting. Cura, inspired by mothers like Jean Donnelly, has been instrumental in driving SUDEP research for the last 20 years, funding work revealing the link between SUDEP and genes in the brain and the heart, and helping establish respiratory arrest as a leading cause of SUDEP. Cure Epilepsy has also supported SUDEP registry development, which encourages accurate reporting of SUDEP-related deaths, increasing our understanding of the prevalence of SUDEP. SUDEP is a scary subject for patients and families, but it's important to remember that patients and families have a great deal of control over this problem, and staying compliant with your medications is the best thing you can do to reduce your risk of SUDEP, and it's a massive reduction in risk by a factor of 30. A huge thank you to Lauren Donnelly for sharing her thoughts and feelings on the impact that SUDEP has had on her. Thank you also to Dr. Kevin Staley for providing an overview of SUDEP and sharing the hope that we have because of research that Cure Epilepsy and others continue to fund so that SUDEP will one day be a thing of the past. If you'd like to learn more about SUDEP and the promise for a cure, please visit us at cureepilepsy.org. Through research, there is hope. Thank you. Mm -hmm.